Yo. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego. We working. I want to talk about these fights. These gummy worms are delicious. What up, Fight World? I'm waiting for the notifications to go out. Shout out to Alkaline Water. Yo. Make sure when y'all come in, y'all smash the like button. We working. Badu Jack versus Adonis Stevenson. Adonis Stevenson versus Badu Jack just took place tonight in Canada. I watched the fight. And um, also watch Gary Russell Jr. versus another junior, Jojo Diaz, both on Showtime. Shout out to Showtime putting on just split sites, double features, quadruple features, triple headers, all this stuff. Showtime's doing a really good job, in my opinion, of boxing and what they're airing. So I don't know if you guys are getting the notifications because it looks kind of shaky. I haven't seen any of the comments come through. If you guys are in the stream, if you can hear me, smash the like button. Thank you. Hey, Ego from Sydney, it looks like. Thoughts on the refereeing tonight? We're going to talk about this. This is going to be a short video. I'm out here in Las Vegas, West Coast, West Side, and I'm going to enjoy my night. So, you know, it's not going to be a long drawn, but we'll be back. I've just been on this world tour. I was in... North Carolina, South Carolina. I was in Cleveland. I was in Akron, where LeBron James, I went to LeBron. You guys will all see it, man. We putting it together, or I'm putting it together. Um, but I'm out with the homies, and we just have a phenomenal time. Just grinding. Catching a lot of planes, it's been great. The only thing is, like, I don't have Mayweather Air, you know, where I could just get on a single jet, you know what I mean? Sometimes there's layovers, delayed flights. That's the only exhausting part, but I like, I love traveling. Right now I'm in Vegas, so I'm gonna enjoy my night here. My homie's downstairs uh, winning some money. Just got back from the Stevenson fight, was great in the building. Yeah, it looked like a, a good crowd. Yo, Eagle, thanks for the hard work, man. Thank you guys to the fans. You guys put me in this position. I'm glad you guys enjoy. Um, how to be not humble. What the fuck are you even talking about? What have I said that was not humble? You know what? Fuck that. I don't even have time to, to cater to the bullshit right now. But anyway, um, Gary Russell Jr. It was a good fight. I thought the tempo of the fight in the first two, three rounds, there was some seesaw action, jockeying for position, and it was getting really, really interesting to me. Right? Really interesting. And... I thought Gary Russell came out sharp in round one, established a beautiful jab. But one thing, and you guys can follow my Twitter, or if you do follow my Twitter, you'll co-sign. I'm putting all the same things that I'm telling you pretty much on Twitter because my thoughts haven't changed from what I tweeted out when I was doing my round-by-round -round assessments and stuff like that to now, you know what I mean, because it's my same brain. But look at the timestamps, and most of what I'll say, if you follow me on Twitter, um, you will have already seen it, but Twitter has limitations. You can't expand on certain things, so that's why it's different when I re-break it down, especially without looking at the tweets. Anyway, one of the first things I said that I noticed is Joseph Jojo Diaz Jr. looked a lot bigger, physically, visibly bigger, 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 bigger. So knowing that he's an Olympian with the same team, I think as Marcus Brown, Errol Spence Jr., I think Wilder might have been there, whoever else, Rasheed Warren, right, all these guys. That plus, his, he's, he's a good boxer, he could box. I was like, that plus, he looked bigger, it looked like he rehydrated to probably like 142, 143, if I had to take an educated guess, he just looked bigger than Gary Russell Jr., right? So I was like, man, this could be very interesting because Gary Russell, it, I don't have all the rounds memorized, but Gary Russell started very good in round one with the jab. And then I think he started off very good in round two. And it was look, it looked like he was trying to bulldog him and like just like kind of go for the knockout. But then out of nowhere, Joseph Jojo Diaz 
started landing some accurate shots, body shots. That was his bread and butter. I think that really kind of slowed down Gary Russell Jr. in some of those mid rounds. And he was landing some effective combinations. And he was using his size, and everything was looking pretty good for him. You know what I mean? See, this is the thing I hate about boxing. I'm not saying I know everything. Trust me, I don't. I don't ever claim I'm not a professional fighter. So if you want to use that against me, oh, you, you don't, you're not a professional fighter, so you don't know shit, whatever. But I will, I will say this. I fuck with boxing. I know my shit. And a lot of people, the thing I don't like is you guys disregard these guys as bums and all types of shit just because you don't know enough about the sport to the point where your your palate hasn't been expanded you don't know enough i've seen like i mean you know i mean a little bit unfair because i cover boxing but i've actually watched joseph jojo diaz fight at least twice i would cover it as media canelo versus golovkin the first fight right and he was on the undercard and um also he was on an Andre Ward card. That was his HBO debut. I think it was Ward versus Barrera. It might have been Ward versus Brand. I don't know. So, in the end, it was... Um, it was... I knew he was good. You know what I'm saying? I knew it. So, like, it's, it's, it's people that don't respect the sport enough to... They're the ones that are saying, like... Like, bottom line, what I'm trying to say is this. I'm not surprised that Joseph Jojo Diaz had his spots. He's a fucking Olympian. And like I said, maybe unfair, but I cover boxing. So I've already watched him live. I was actually at, um, it was the Canelo Chavez Jr. It was Canelo Chavez Jr. in Linwood. They did a press tour stop. The last stop, I went to that one. Me and my homeboy, Rich, who's downstairs. And I went to that, and he was there, right? And I was on live. And if you guys remember that live stream, which you probably don't, but I was talking to him, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was doing like a posing photo op thing. And I was just live, and I was like, yo, what's up, Boxing Ego? So um, I knew he was a good fighter, so I, I expected that. But, I like, bottom line is this. Joseph Jojo Diaz, he didn't do enough to get it done. I think after the sixth round, I think it was the sixth round, is it basically the halfway mark at the second half of the fight. See, I'm going to tell you what he did wrong from my perspective. Make sure you smash the like button. This is not going to be a long street. I am in Las Vegas. Hold on, let me show you Excuse the messy room. Yeah, people, we working. We in Vegas. Yeah, you hear me? We in Vegas again. You hear me? This is my back. This is my backyard. My second home, West Side. You know, West Coast. So yeah, it's not gonna be a long stream, people, because I'm going out to explore the city. I, I might gamble. I might drink a little something. I don't know. Like Floyd said, we, we just have to wait and see. Anyway, Gary Russell Jr., Joseph Jojo Diaz. In the second round, Joseph Diaz was getting like clipped up by Gary Russell. And then he started standing his ground. He started standing his ground, which led to some very vicious body shots and combinations. So in those middle rounds, it got hairy for Gary Russell. It also looked like in points of the fight, even in the 12th round, it looked like Fighting the bigger man, the guy who, who looked naturally taller, naturally bigger, kind of took his toll on Gary Russell because he looked tired in spots. You know what I mean? And he, he had to... I was very impressed with Gary Russell because he had to be very active and establish that jab. And he had to do all this just to hold this man off because he's in there with a good boxer and somebody who probably rehydrated more than him and just looked physically bigger. Very impressive performance by Gary Russell Jr., um, you got to rate him. You got to rate him at featherweight. I told you for the longest. See, <laughs> this is why new media be fucking your boys up. I told y'all since Lomachenko left featherweight, I feel Gary Russell Jr. is the best featherweight. I think he's the man to beat. Those are my words exactly. Now, maybe some of you guys understand why. Because Joseph Jojo Diaz, you have to understand styles make fights. Gary Russell Jr. was in there with a very good boxer, and I'm going to get to that in a second, and an Olympian who has heart. He, I mean, after that performance, neither guy's heart can be denounced or denied or whatever, and he still beat him, and he still made the proper adjustments. You feel me? 
So other fights in the division, like Abner Mata's, Leo Santa Cruz, Gary Russell already beat Leo Santa Cruz when they were kids as amateurs. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying he's just absolutely, we got to see how Leo looks, but I think Gary Russell's the man to beat at featherweight. Yeah, I told you about Lee Selby. Like, y'all motherfuckers are calling him the Welsh Mayweather. He ain't even the Welsh Jeff Mayweather. Fuck out of here. He just lost today to whatever, Warrington. Shout out to him. I don't even know him. I don't know you beat, I don't know you lost to. I don't even know who that is, really. But he lost to him. I don't know you beat, I don't know you lost to. So... You got to put it, you you got to, you got to give it up. Give respect where respect's due. That motherfucker Gary Russell was in there with Olympian and he handled business. Made the adjustments. And the other thing that I like from Gary Russell Jr. is despite the tenacity, the durability, the heart, the body punching, the bigger size and rehydration of Joseph Jojo Diaz, the confidence from being an undefeated fighter, smash the like button while I break this shit down. Despite all of that, right? Gary Russell overcame it. Also, I even said this, and I have witnesses, but I don't have to prove it, that Gary Russell has hand issues. So I said, fighting a bigger guy, I wouldn't be surprised if he hurt his hand. Post-fight, what did he say? Oh, uh, yeah, I think I hurt my hand in the third or fourth round. So I believe him because guys with snappy power and speed and, and punch hard and shit, a lot of them have hand troubles. Floyd Mayweather, brittle hand. That's why he uses uh, Grant, Elvis Grant. Is, is the best gloves, you know what I'm saying? That's why he uses it, because they have like an orthopedic type of glove, right? Nonito Donaire had hand troubles. Gary Russell has a history of it, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I was very impressed with Gary Russell. Also impressed with Joseph Jojo Diaz. Like, it's, it's a learning experience for Joseph Jojo Diaz. I would support his future fights. I think he's game, you know what I mean? Like, even Joseph Jojo Diaz versus Oscar Valdez, that's a very good fight. That's a very good fight. You know what I'm saying? Conflicting styles, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it's, it's no knock on Joseph Jojo Diaz. It's a type of performance where he learns something from it. And it just depends on how he takes it. If he was holding his whole hat on, his whole cap was me being undefeated. And now his, his personality changes or something, then he's going to struggle. But as long as he doesn't do that, he's good. He can come back. He has the skills. Just get back in the gym. Get back right maybe take a tune-up, but it's a, it's more of a learning experience. But I thought Gary Russell, his pro-level experience, his amateur experience, his seasoning, he just knew what to do, and he outboxed, especially in the second half. He made the adjustments. Now, what last thing about this uh, Russell Diaz for right now, because I'm, I'm going to try to condense this video. Last thing that Gary Russell um, did well, like with the adjustments versus Jojo Diaz didn't do, is Diaz was imposing the physicality of the fight. He was like, kind of like on some Golovkin shit, like I'm gonna walk you down and you can't take it, right? But the problem he made is Gary Russell got back on his stick, pause. He got back to that jab and kept that jab. And see, Gary Russell, you could tell he's an experienced person comes from a fight family because he was going high, low, high, low. He was mixing it up. He was doing that. I call it the Floyd Mayweather move because that Floyd, to me, made it famous. It's just like Michael Jackson didn't create the moonwalk. There was actually an early jazz musician who created a very similar tap dancing move called the moonwalk. Well, it wasn't called the moonwalk, but it was the same basic thing. But we all know Michael Jackson as the originator, so he gets the credit. You know what I mean? Nobody's like, oh, Bill Bailey is the fucking moonwalk king. So I call it the Floyd move where he... He sticks you to the solar plexus, like jab to the pit of the stomach. You know what I mean? The guy on Punch Out did it too with the King Hippo or whatever the guy is with the tape on his belly button. But that was impressive. Do that against big guys, um, guys that outweigh you and stuff. Gary Russell was going to the body in that way. And I think he just overall outboxed Joseph Jojo Diaz. Jojo Diaz didn't really do much continually for three-minute rounds beyond round seven. Like, not to say he wasn't competitive, not to say he didn't um, try, not to say um, he wasn't doing good in spots, but he wasn't winning three-minute rounds beyond round seven. So that's my opinion. Uh, props to both. I enjoyed the fight. Very good technical fight, but the fight got away from jo Jojo Diaz. And the adjustment he could have made is when Gary Russell started trying to outbox him and not necessarily not trying to school him or like really go for the kill and knockout and just got back to the fundamentals of boxing, sweet science shit. 
Joseph Jojo Diaz was still trying to walk in and get real estate. Now, see, the thing in boxing is you could do something and it may work for several rounds. But the moment it's not working in round six, it's not working in round seven, it's not working in round eight, that's when you got to make the adjustment. You can't keep doing the same shit that's not working, even if it. that's what fighters do. That's why Floyd Mayweather is arguably the greatest when it comes to a boxing brain, because Floyd tells you, uh, it's all about adjustments. I, c I can adjust. No, no matter what he's going to do, I. that's what Joseph Jojo Diaz should learn from this experience, because he simply did not make the adjustment. Even Golovkin, right? You, you all say, I, I hate Golovkin or whatever, but he makes the adjustment when he can't bulldoze you and just outpower you. Then he'll go to the basics, which is a fucking jab. You know what I'm saying? And he'll just establish that jab, and it's a good-ass jab. So you, good luck getting past that because his jab is like a power punch. You know what I mean? Because he's strong. Lomachenko, when he got dropped and put on his butt versus Lenatis, what did he do? Revert back to the basic fundamentals. Use some movement. He wasn't all this matrix shit until he recouped and regrouped. So that's what Joseph Jojo Diaz did. It was working for him early, just walking in the front door, not really jabbing, um, vicious body shots in combination. Gary Russell got to get a defense for body shots because he, he gave up too many body shots. You know what I mean? But then the moment it stopped working, I think he could have made the adjustment. Main event, Badu Jack versus um, Adonis Stevenson. I really got to watch it again. It was a very tough fight to score. Um, you could argue that Badu Jack was losing the first five rounds, maybe six. Some people would say that, but some people would say that Badu Jack maybe nabbed some rounds. Um, then Badu Jack started picking up, and he inflicted more punishment, more damage than Badu Jack, I mean, than Adonis Stevenson did in his five rounds that he arguably won, or where he looked the best in the first five rounds. You get what I'm saying? But then... Badu Jack started taking away Adonis Stevenson's body was wilting. He looked sluggish. He looked like he was ready to go. He looked like he wasn't, his heart wasn't in it. He looked discouraged. He looked frustrated. But then to, to make that more fucked up is Badu Jack got hurt in like the 10th round with a, a well-placed body shot. And you can see him. He's like right here with it tucking that elbow deep, like embedding that into his body, trying to protect. But Badu Jack, that's my dude. He has heart, so he weathered it. He did not crumble, he did not fold, and he did not go down. So he was clearly hurt though. So some people, I don't know. I don't know how people scored that round. You know what I mean? Some people would maybe even say it's a 10-8 round. See, I don't know. Boxing scoring is weird because it's, it's, some people just do whatever the fuck they want. Because there was rounds where it looked like Adonis Stevenson was on his way out to uh, out to lunch. Hold on. He was out to lunch, you know what I mean? And he didn't, you could have scored that a 10-8 round. But if, if the round where Badu Jack got hurt to the body, how would you score that? You know what I'm saying? So there's some there's some tricky rounds in there. Tricky rounds in there where it could have went. I guess anyway. Um, 12 round, Badu Jack. He had Adonis looking bad in that 12. He had him looking real bad. I thought he definitely won that round. Um... Kind of hard fight to score, you know what I mean? Because it depends depends on what you look at for certain things. You know what I mean? It reminded me of uh, Lamont Peterson versus Danny Garcia. Lamont Peterson inflicted more pain, I would say, on Danny Garcia. Garcia was having trouble catching Lamont Peterson and like kind of cornering him. He was missing wildly and stuff like that. Although I think Donis in his first five rounds did better than Danny Garcia because Danny Garcia was missing a lot. But it was a fight of halves, so to speak, because when Lamont Peterson turned up and got it cracking for, for his side, then Danny Garcia started to, to wilt. So um, 
gun to my head right now, I'd probably say Jack won it by a slim margin. But I, I got to watch it again because, like I said, there were some points in there that was kind of like, like, how do you, okay. If you gave Adonis the first five, six rounds and then he stole round 10 by hurting, by hurting Jack to the body, which was very visible, then how, how could Jack have won? You know what I mean? Because you gave him six rounds plus the 10th round where he hurt Jack to the body, that's seven rounds out of 12. So I, I got to watch those early rounds, but no doubt about it, Badu Jack overall, like you could tell by face recognition, he inflicted more punishment. Adonis Stevenson's face was all cut up, bloody, looked like shit, all that type of stuff. He just didn't, and he looked sloppy. Like when he started getting hit with big shots, he was, his body was swaying. See, Adonis' problem is he's athletic and he has power and he kind of relies on that. He can box better than people give him credit for. But if those things start to fade as you fatigue, then he just loses his composure. Like, you know what I mean? Those, that's his bread and butter, athleticism and power. And he was like pushing his punches and stuff. I thought the ref was Basuda. Ref was definitely garbage. I uh, wasn't a fan of the ref. Didn't give, it was, it was like an Anthony Joshua type of ref where it didn't do any favors to the guy who wants to fight on the inside. Anthony Joshua, when he was fighting um, Joseph Parker, the inside work is what he really wanted. That would benefit Joseph Parker to get off on the inside. And the ref was, every time they got close, he was stripping that opportunity away from him. Similar with this fight, Badu Jack and Adonis Stevenson. Badu Jack was trying to get some good inside work and um, the ref was intervening. And then it was like just weird stuff the ref was doing. The ref also, Adonis Stevenson clinched a lot. He clinched a lot throughout the fight, never was warned. I understand they're in Canada, but he never warned him. And then all of a sudden, the first moment that Badu Jack clinches like once, the ref was like, hey, no clinching. It was like, why didn't you say that to Adonis' ass? You know what I mean? The former pimp, he was clinching more than anybody. So, you know what I mean? A bit unfair. But I guess that's what you deal with when you fight in someone's backyard in this age of boxing. So, fuck it. Um, that's just my assessment. It was a good fight. Some back and forth action. Showtime's killing. That's, that's just really what I saw. Um... Some people would blame Badu Jack. I mean, it's crazy how he keeps getting these very controversial close draws. Uh, Lucian Butte, the fight with James DeGale, and now this. That's three that I can think of, and he arguably won those fights. So um, a bit crazy that he keeps being in this predicament. But some people would blame him for getting off to a slow start and being overly cautious and not doing enough. And then, I don't know. Some people would say it was a draw. Some people... I don't know. I got to watch it again. But off the top of my head, I would say yeah, I would give it to Badu Jack by a round or two. You know what I mean? I guess a draw is cool because he... No, nah, I mean, it's not cool because Badu Jack, if he won, he won. You know what I mean? That's the part, the, the point system. That's the problem. Because it was very apparent that Adonis Stevenson's best rounds, except for round 10, did not compare to Badu Jack's punishment that he inflicted in his best rounds. You know what I'm saying? And they both won very close amount of rounds. Like that 12th round, Adonis was not looking good. You know what I mean? But I'll watch it again. Anyway, I'm in Vegas, so I'm about to see what's cracking out here. You guys let me know what you think. Drop the likes, comments, all that good stuff. Make sure you smash the like button. Let me know what you thought of the fight. Showtime Boxing is killing the game. And I'm off to Vegas. Well, I'm in Vegas, but let me see what Vegas is talking about. Peace out.